Welcome back to Breakfast Central. Please remember to follow us on all social media platforms at News Central TV. We'll be taking you on a tour around Africa, looking at all the papers, the front pages, and what they're saying. We're going to be heading over to our first paper, and that is the blueprint. Now, the big story there says, return presidency to South. Dow's raging restiveness. That's the top story. We're seeing that we're having conversations about zoning and what exactly um, this is, what exactly this has to do with um, precedence. We must avoid self-inflicted crisis before general elections, Ondo government says. No section of Nigeria should be allowed to dominate the order. Finally declares today, unveils agenda. Interesting story there. Buhari's visit to Ebony raises fresh hope on Igbo presidency, Ohaneza says. Uh, we're also seeing on the blueprint, El Rufai says, informants assist terrorists attacking Kaduna communities. I think it's an important conversation to look at. It's um, on page six of the blueprint. We also see here, UK firm rejects $500 million to rescue Nigeria from youth unemployment moves to transform Abuja to Dubai. That's on page 13. A rather interesting story, <laughs> don't you think, Joe? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay, now this is a very interesting one. On page 7, it says, Prayers will smooth in ongoing rough edges in Nigeria. Prayers will smooth in ongoing rough edges in Nigeria. Wow, wow. We are very religious, but it's also important that we do the work that needs to be done. And um, we also have anti-piracy war on page 23. Security experts storm Abuja for Gulf of Guinea conference. And I'll take two more stories and it's a wrap for me here. On the top of the paper, next president, of course, we've talked about this earlier. Next president must come from southern Nigeria. Akiri Dolu tells APC, that's on page two. And finally, Peter Obi stresses need to replace sharing production Formula. If you'd like to find out the details of these stories, please get yourself a copy of the Blueprint paper. All right, let's leave the Blueprint now. Let's go straight to another paper this morning. It is the Daily Monitor, and Daily Monitor is indeed loaded. First off, what will catch your attention is the picture you have uh, in front of the Daily Monitor. You can, uh, you can see uh, conjoined twins, or what they call semis twins. Yes, Ugandan doctors separate conjoined twins. Now, they put their milestone. Uh, I mean, this is where you say, well done, doctors, well done. Amazing. Yes, I mean, this is uh, one good story that will keep you uh, smiling because when you see what um, um, uh, doctors are doing in the medical field, then you are indeed saying, I am proud of you, doctors. Kudos to you, doctors. Uh, there's also a special report here on the front page of Daily Monitor. It says, a report released yesterday by um, ECO, a, a, a Makerere University project, uh, that monitors air quality indicates that city dwellers are breathing themselves to death mm. with increasing contaminated air. Page six. Mm. Read about that. You are breathing yourselves to death. Now, that was indeed a report that was released yesterday as well. Well, the head of air says air pollution in Kampala gets worse. I just hope that they can actually um, carry out this same report in Lagos. And also in Port Harcourt as in well, Lagos, because people have been complaining about the, like the black suit in Port Yeah, the black suit, completely. I mean, uh, I, if they're saying they bring themselves to death, I wonder what they will say concerning that other headline very when it happens. True. When it happens. Let's take uh, a few more stories very quickly. Uh, still on the Daily Monitor, the front page there says, uh, Torture, poor, pay, dominate World Press Freedom Day. Torture, and then poor, pay dominate World Press Freedom Day. Uh, truthfully, we must say this as a, uh, most journalists are very, very uh, paid in a poor, in a poor way. Uh, MPs block government's plan to impose fees without approval. Two Ugandan women jump to death abroad. Wow. Ooh la la. What a story. We'll stop here. That's what we'll take for the Daily Monitor. What a sad way to stop. And then we'll be moving over to our next paper, the Daily Trust. The big page, the big story rather on the front page is Nigerian journalists decry worsening conditions. You know, Joe just spoke about this in his last paper as well. We find that this is a common theme because yesterday was World Freedom of the Press Day or World Press Freedom Day. 71 pressmen killed, 293 incarcerated one year worldwide. That's a very high number there. Practitioners under surveillance in Nigeria, Joe. 
Are you, hmm. are you sure we're not being surveilled? <laughs> oh, wow, interesting. <laughs> Stick to ethics, government tells media. Um, at the bottom of the page, we have, we'll never allow terrorists to have their way, says the Sultan. I really hope that we truly would not allow them to have their way. Ami declares war on IPOB for killing couple personnel. That's on page... Uh, uh, that's on the page there, but the, the sad thing is, it's on page 30. We did see the story of this uh, military couple that were killed, beheaded. It was, it was a sad story. Oh, that's, Gory, that's so sad. to say the least. And to think that they only just got married recently. We see 50 passengers escape as fire guards, planes, tires in Port Harcourt. I could not imagine how horrible that would have been should this fire had happened in the air. So we're grateful that this happened on the ground. And we want to hope that more planes are being checked to ensure that the safety of Nigerians are being guaranteed. This is why some people would say they would rather fly um, international flights than local flights because mm. they have trust issues concerning mm -hmm. the safety of these airlines. 2023 presidency, Tinubu Oshibajo, other Southwest leaders to meet on Friday. Seven years after, federal government yet to implement aviation development roadmap. Um, that's all that will be taken on the Daily Trust. If you'd like to find the details of this story, of course, feel free to grab yourself a copy of this paper. That's right. Let's move away from the Daily Trust now. Let's go straight. Uh, let's talk business this morning. Let's talk business. Come on, let's talk business. Mm -hmm. Business days where we're going to, and that's where uh, you have the big header there. Nigeria earns twice more from gas than oil in Q1. Quite interesting yeah. and insightful. Nigeria earns twice more from gas than oil in Q1. That's quarter one. It talks about Nigeria's gas revenue um, um, actually outpaced its earnings uh, from crude <coughs> oil. Um, also, the lifeblood of Africa's uh, biggest economy uh, in the first quarter of 2022 and keeping up with uh, the trend that first emerged in December 2020. So uh, there is data. Data has been obtained from uh, the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPC, and it showed that, that crude oil exports are uh, indeed uh, stretched the nation. Yes, of course, it it fetched the nation, I beg your pardon, about uh, $177.86 uh, million over a three months period. Revenue from gas feedback to Nigeria LNG Limited uh, amounted uh, to about, uh, we're looking at about um, uh, $387.73 million. So uh, that's a big story there from the front page. Let's take another uh, header quickly. Uh, African startups raise $2.25 billion in four months up 250 percent we must give it up to african startups african startups are doing fantastically well uh, we've seen um, international startups as well and well-known companies uh, coming down to africa to ensure that they can set up their companies partnerships of course also give out seedings and fundings yeah. here and there so african startups have been able to raise uh, 2.25 billion dollars in four months amazing i'll take just one last one before we go straight to our top story of then then this one is Shopping sales hit 9.76 trillion naira as COVID-19 curbs case. Uh, that's according to Euro Monitor. Ah, uh, page 20. Uh, I beg your pardon. Uh, page 30 has uh, that story. So that's exactly where we'll stop concerning the front pages of the papers for this morning.